If you are new to Ho'oponopono and learn this Hawaiian healing method by watching YouTube videos and by reading on the internet. You probably think that the only tool to cleanse your negative memories is to chant I am sorry, please forgive me, thank you, and I love you. That was what I thought too, almost a year ago. The internet space is blanketed with Dr. Aheliakula who lends reinvented version of Ho'oponopono. Many YouTube videos even misleadingly attribute the four-phase mantra to Morna Simona. According to Dr. Hu Len, there are more cleaning tools than the four-phase mantra. Let's go to the tape to learn what these cleaning tools are. So every time you use this process, and so, several processes are going to be given, it's the process of, I'm sorry, please forgive me, and then allowing divinity to erase. So only divinity can erase. So I'm going to pause you through. So first of all, I'm going to put up here the number 10. And this number 10 means completion. This is what this number stands for, for this class. I don't know about any other class. I'm only here. This is my responsibility is for this class. And then I'm going to show you the ha, which is, which is the process of um, infusing. The divine. So you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna allow the divinity when you do the ha. You're going to pull it in, and it's not oxygen. So I'm gonna put that down. Not ox. So it isn't it isn't breathing physically. It's breathing mentally to get at uh, spiritually to get at the memory. So I'm not doing this for your body. I'm doing it for your soul because that's where the problem is. And when your soul clears, is cleared of these memories, your body will pop it. Yeah. So I'm going to talk about the four corners of the universe. So when you do this process, you're, you're going to inhale. And the, in, what you're inhaling is the divine. And as you're inhaling, you're going to count to 10. And you, you can count it real fast. So as I'm breathing in, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, or 1, 2, <laughs> however it works for you. So you're breathing in this. And the only purpose is to cancel memories, release entities, earthbound spirits, negative vibrations, space beings from your, from your computer bank. We're loaded with that stuff. And then you're going to exhale. You're going to do a quick count of how it works for you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you breathe in on a count of ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten. Then you, I'm sorry, excuse me. You're going to hold for a count of ten. And you, as you breathe in, you hold. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Or however you do it. And then you exhale. On, t on the count of 10. And then you, you pause on the count of 10. Now, now you pause. Okay, so you inhale on 10, pause on 10, exhale on 10, pause on 10. And we're going to do 10 rounds of these. And one of the purposes of doing this, this breathing it has many purposes. One of the purposes is to shut down all these psychic doors that are open that will drive your subconscious crazy. Yeah, when well, you get confused, you don't know what's up, what's down. So this is going to close a lot of those doors, okay? So this is, this is what I'm going to ask you to do. So all I'm going to ask you to do is this. This, is, this is represents the, uh, the infinite in you. This is the divine. This is the one that makes it happen. This is your thumb. Without your thumb, hard to, ha hard to have. Then this is the, your pointing finger. This is you and the divinity is one. And then you're going, to, you're going to sit on your chair, and you're going to put your back up against the back of the chair. So you sit comfortably up against the back, because when you breathe, you're also going to include family, relatives, and ancestors. <coughs> Back to the beginning of creation. So you're not just breathing for yourself, but you're breathing for all of the generations that came before you. 
clearing whatever's back there and whatever, whatever it is, I don't know. So this is the position you would take. Thumb, four fingers sitting on your lap, both of your feet on the ground because you're, you're going to now include Mother Earth because Mother Earth is part of your, your family. And then, you're, then, and then you're just simply going to breathe. As you breathe in, you count to 10. However, some of you will do it fast, some of you do it slow. So you breathe in as you count to 10. Hold for 10. Exhale for 10. Hold for 10. That's one round. I'm going to ask you to do 10 rounds. And when you are done, then, then you have this earthbound spirit moving around in the universe. It doesn't know where to go. Um, I used to be, I used to do a work, some work at, in a hospital at Hawaii State um, at a hospital in Honolulu. And they, the director would ask me to come occasionally because they would be losing more and more people in the ER room. And so you, you go, and I do my cleaning before I go, but if I didn't do it, I, I, I actually try to look, okay, I'm not going to do my cleaning. So I show up, I walk into the room, the ER room, and from here down I can't feel my body. You, and you look, you see all this earthbound spirits on the ceiling crying. I mean, it's, and the, as the room fills, more people will die. So now those kind of earthbound spirits we're responsible for and we're stuck with. So, so when you do this breathing, this allows, because you're doing it as the breathing, you erase this memory, this soul can go back into the light. That's how incredible this cleaning can be. So you don't have to go, if somebody says, well, there's a spook in our house, you don't have to go there. Just find out the person's name, know, know the address, and know that you're the problem. And you do this breathing, or you do the cleaning, the earthbound spirits will go. They want to go. Yes. But they're loaded. Particularly in hospitals. Uh, my brother was once a, a fireman. And on a particular corner, on a particular intersection in Honolulu, there are always people dying. And so he asked me to look. When I looked, you could see people were already dead there. So it was just more and more stuff, more and more people dying because it was already dead. So now you do the cleaning. I did my cleaning, asked for forgiveness. I love you, whatever. Well, now nobody has an accident there. So you have to prepare, train yourself to look? No, I wouldn't look. If, if they gave me enough information. Do you want to make? No, I want to know what the next process is. Oh, okay. So, I, I have a blue bottle here. So, I want to thank Suzanne and Bruce. So I'm going to show you how to make a special kind of water that will release memories, earthbound spirits, into these space beings. So, here's the blue soul. Here's blue water. So here, here's how this works. What you, what you need, this is a cleaning process. So what you need is a blue bottle. It can be any kind of bottle. It has to be glass. Of course it has to be blue. Then you fill it up with tap water. And this is my, in Los Angeles. Does it have to be tap water? Can it be filtered water? Uh, um, 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 tap water. Are you sure? And I say, I say to them, do what you want, but I hear tap water. You may hear it differently, so be my guest. But I'm going to instruct this as what I heard. So you put tap water in there. Then you need, a, you need a solar source. It could be the sun. But let's say, so the sun comes down and hits that, and hits in the bottom. Now what it will do, it will take all the toxins out, any memories that is not correct for you, and, and it will infuse it with whatever rainbow colors that's perfect for you. It will make this exchange. So down comes the source, it could be the sun, or it could be an incandescent light bulb, not fluorescent. So there's been a move to blue fluorescent lamps too bad for us, because they burn. If you go to classrooms in which the fluorescent lamp leads, you have a lot of problems, you see. So now you can have this as a source, energy source, or the sunlight. What it needs is at least an hour. 
Then you go, okay, I, I fill it up with tap water. I leave it out in the sun or under an incandescent lamp. And now all I do is, is I'm, I'm going to drink the stuff. And there's another form that says, I love you. Did you drink out of this water? I did. Good, I'll drink it too. So now I'm drinking it. As I drink it, it'll begin to work on erasing anything in you, entities, earthbound, space vibration, anything like that. Can you say that again, please? It'll do the cleaning as the same thing as I love you. But now, now what this will do for you, just because most of us run around dehydrated, it will do it like this. If you have any respiratory problems, if you drink at least a gallon of this, it'll knock it out. If you have any back problems, you have any joint problems, you have any muscle problems, it'll knock it out. Just, just memories. But now you're hydrating yourself. Now remember now, it's going into the subconscious before it goes into the cell. It's changing you at the subconscious level. So if you drink this stuff, a lot of your health, so-called health problems will go. Guaranteed. If you have, I had a, I had a mother who, who had really was depressed after giving birth to a baby, I, I don't know why. So as I was working on that, looking at myself, doing my cleaning, her divinity said the water would work for her. In, in like a week or so, it went. Just went. Now, what happened? I don't, I have no idea. I'm not privy to that kind of information. All I know is that it worked. Yeah. Yes, Bruce? Uh, uh. And you keep thinking it's the other person. And it has nothing to do with the other person, nothing to do with you. It's a, it's a memory. That's what's going to kick. Anything else before I go to the next cleaning tool? Okay. This is called a bluebell. This is what we call elegance. <coughs> this is the state flower of Texas. So this is something that is called bluebell. So it's a cleaning process to help bring elegance into your being. <coughs> Instead of being rashes and, and bitchy and moany and groaning, it will help you be more elegant. Yes, Bruce. Uh, Dr. Lynn, some of us in Texas call that a blue bonnet. That would be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and you know that the Mexicans call it something else, right? What do the Mexicans call it? You ought to know, because, yeah. So I'm going to pass this around, and you can get introduced to it, blue bonnet. But that's, that's another cleaning process. So any questions about the blue bonnet? So let's say I'm about to go anybody, and instead of saying, I love you, my, my, I get this, I, I can use a blue bonnet. So I just say, blue bonnet. That's it. And it begins this, um, this undoing, this this kind of possible earthquake up, up at his Jim's area. Jim, have you guys had any kind of rumbles up there uh, maybe over the last five years? Not that I'm aware of. Oh, you should check, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> so this blue bonnet helps with the, with the lessening of the abuse to Mother Earth. It brings more elegance and allows us to really appreciate Mother Earth more. Blue bonnet. You go up on the internet, there are all kinds of names for it. So any questions about the elegance of the blue bonnet? Yeah. Uh, where did it come from? Because I don't remember you talking about this before. So did you sit in meditation or something and inspiration said, and it, it came, out. Yeah, it came out of the void. It came out of zero. You know, there was a, there was a woman in uh, Los Angeles. <laughs> I should say man, but I, she was really a woman. So a woman in Los Angeles said, why, why can't we just say I love you? Why do we have to have all these different processes? So I said, if, if you were to take me in, in, and place me in front of your clothes closet and you open it up, how many pieces of clothing would I see? And she was embarrassed. She said, you see a whole mess of them. And I said, well, why is that? She said, because on certain days I like this. And so, so it was the same thing with the part of you that says, hey, I prefer the blue bonnet today. 
I prefer this to my, whatever. So now you have a choice, yeah? Any questions about that? And with the federal government, yeah? yeah. But in the meantime, in the meantime, you might have some questions. Otherwise, I'll go on to another cleaning process. I'll go on to another cleaning process. This is a corn cob. This is corn. So as I was doing my cleaning and, and watching what came up, um, the corn came up. And you know the corn comes from a very ancient grass. Ancient. Ancient, go way, way, way back. So the corn is a, is a, is a family of that. So the Indians, one of the things the Indians got was the corn represent this reaching up for the divine. So as I watched this corn in my mind, I saw it reach through. Can you pass that around? looking for the blue, blue pen. Any, did I leave it around? Yeah. I'm afraid I'm going to mark it up worse than I did before. Okay. There is a red, there's one over there by the water. Okay. So the Indians were, the, this particular Indian tribe were, were, were moved. Something moved them and, and the symbol of the corn moved them. How it was moved, I don't know that. We'd have to meditate on that. So what came up in this mind is this, this circle, complete circle, representing completion, and then this, this, another completion. So if you look at the, if you look at the, the teepee, you will find the original teepee has 10, 10 actual Panels. I don't know what they look like now. So what do you suppose the panels represent? In, in your mind, just sort of clean and see what comes up. What do you suppose the panels represent? Roots. I'm sorry? Roots. Okay. Anybody? Stages of life. Okay. Yeah. So, so the, the, one of the things it represents is the mountains. And this right here, this opening, represents the, this, this, this zero. This, so that they're able to stand on this mat called zero and look at the cosmos. And coming through this, represented the, the panel represents light, sunlight coming down. So now, however it worked, I, and I don't know how it worked, but what they saw coming out was this, was this corn going reaching way up into nothingness. And this is what this corn represents. Can you show it? Can you let me? David, thank you. So now, what this corn represents, and I'm going to pass around some product, is that the corn has silk on it. So what the silk will do is it'll reach into the subconscious of your being and begin to look at the memories inside of you. And so as you use the, 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 these products, and I'm going to call it maize, not corn, I'm going to call it maize. So this gives you this ability of being complete, whole, and it gives you this ability to reach up into the cosmos by simply eating and using these things. So this morning, this morning I came down looking for something to eat, and I heard, there's the cornflakes. You know, and so I looked at the cornflakes, my intellect was saying whether well, there was garbage in there. I'm going, and I heard, hello, just eat the stuff. And I said, okay. <laughs> okay. So, so anything that's corn is a cleaning process. Now, you could do this corn in two ways. You could just simply say corn, so you say it. Maize, rather. In your mind, you say maize, and so it's a deletion process. It'll, it'll give you, this is you, it'll give you the ability to reach up into the cosmos and, and literally hold the hands of the divine. This is what the corn is doing. It's reaching for the sun, up and up and up. You don't see it here, 
But what happens, remember I drew the three selves around it, so it's reaching up into the cosmos, but it's all zero, yeah? <coughs> so zero, zero. So the idea is all you have to do is say or think maze, and it, it will begin the process of deleting <coughs> memories, releasing earthbound spirits, working on different, closing down different dimensions. So I've asked uh, Suzanne, so she was kind enough, can you, can you give us the, the bag of um, chips and we can pass it around? The blue, or the the blue and, the, and the round, yeah. So we're going to pass it around. If you're wanting to eat any of it, please be our guest. So this idea of by, by eating it, by saying it, by thinking it, it gives you this ability to reach up and touch the sky. So I'm just going to pass this around by looking at it. This is a cleansing process in and of itself. Anybody else before I go on to? Yes, ma'am. Um, I can, I, can I show you here? I'll give you what my name is. Because if you pronounce my name correctly, it's a cleaning tool. So I'll just put it up on the board. This is why if you have the correct name, your name itself becomes the cleaning process. If the name is incorrect, all hell breaks loose. You want to, why is the person mad at me? Why? It's about your name, not you. Yeah. So I'm just going to put it on, and you, you, have, you can do it with what you want. But here in Hawaiian, the I is pronounced as E. It's an E sound. Okay, so Hale, like Spanish, it's even keel. Hale means house. A means of. Ka, la. So, and then uh, uh, Okino sign there. So it means I, Hale, A, Ka, La. If you say this La only, it means money. But if you say la, it means son. If you say la, it means forgiveness. So the, the name, the pronunciation is very important. So ha, e haleakala. Yes. Yes. E haleakala. Yes. First, the close head. I mean, yeah. So, you know, you're, you're, you're always taking responsibility. You're always taking responsibility. There's no way you can get out of it. Because every time there's a problem, you're always there. So, so then, then the, even the worst part here is called thinking. Now here's what thinking looks like. So here's the soul. This is the bottom here. This is the soul right here. This is the soul is the intellect in the child. This is the soul of the mind. And so what happens is thinking is you're always engaged. This, the, 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 the intellect is always engaged in the data, as opposed to letting go, which is very hard to do, by the way. I want to let you know, hard to do, hard to let go of data. <coughs> At least I'm not aware of it. That's why I do my cleaning. But boy, if I get stuck in the data, it shows. That's what my children say. Dad, it really shows, you know. <laughs> I say, okay, sorry. So now, in order to get to the data, which is where the problem is, the, the, when, you do this, when you do the cleaning, it goes downward. Yeah. Down, because that's where the hurt and pain is. And then, then it goes down, and so gently the cleaning rocks, this like, like sand at the bottom of a, of a river, gently rocks when you say, I love you. And whatever's right will come up, not the whole thing. If the whole thing comes up, you get traumatized. It can only handle so much. So now it comes up, and so that, that information goes on to the, uh, the spirit part of you, who's never connected. You know that I showed this non-connection? It's always free of the data. So you have two parts of you always free of the data, the spirit part of you and the divine. So now the information goes up, ding, 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 ding. And remember the old biblical invocation, if you knock, I will open. If you ask, I will, you will receive. So now come down the data. This is called mana, or purifying energy. It's on the way down. Comes down spiritually, nothing there to clean. Comes down, ooh, all kinds of hanging on to clean there. And then it comes down, and it finally, at some point, it, it erases. So now, 
you cannot erase you. So it erases that, erases that, erases that. You're back to zero. Instantly, as again the biblical saying, supposedly Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom, and all else will be added automatically. Instantly, you get inspiration. And all you said was, I love you. Thank you. Blue solar water. Blue, blue bell. Or blue bonnet. That's all you said. I mean, it's incredible, the simplicity of this. When I saw it for the first time, I was just mind boggled. Because uh, I, as a PhD guy, I mean, you know, you struggle. <laughs> You're supposed to struggle. When I saw this, and this old short lady, when I took the course of her the first time, I, I paid, I think, then it was 500 bucks. So I come in, I sit down, there must have been about 40 people, and there's this old lady walking around, and you know, I'm watching her. And then she says, do you see, do you see, this, do you see this Chinese spirit in the middle of the table? I went, oh my God. <laughs> During a break, I went home. I mean, I, I'm what, is, what is she talking about? So anyway, so I'm at home. I don't have very much money. I'm at home. I just finished school and all that sort of stuff. I'm, I'm at home, and then I this is like this pull. <laughs> Go back again. I said, no way. Go back. So this the struggle. And then finally I said, ah, I didn't want to struggle. I went back again. I lasted only up to lunch. She says, you, you see these earthbound spirits on the ceiling? I'm like, <laughs> of course, you could see some people go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, I'm going, I only see the ceiling, you know? And so... And so I did it three times. And finally, the third time, I said, hey, I can't be paying 500 bucks every time. I'm just going to hang around. This was 1982, so I hung around. And more and more, as she cleaned, so I can get clear. So when you clean, David, me, and everybody who, ha who had that memory will get clearer and clearer and clearer because you are willing to be, because the rest